Hey guys, it's Mike here, and today we are going to be bringing you another video about Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, and Dragon Ball GT, in which we are going to be breaking down how strong we believe that you need to be in order to defeat your opponent in Dragon Ball. And so today, myself and Geeklist TV are going to be giving our best educated opinions on how strong we believe that they need to be in this series. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on all upcoming videos in the future. All right, MJ. So today we're going to be discussing that topic, how strong we, you know, they need to be in Dragon Ball and, you know, the whole franchise as a whole to defeat your opponent, to overpower them and to basically dominate them. And a lot of people have different theories and different opinions as to how strong they believe certain characters need to be. Some people think it needs to be many, many times stronger, like tens or 50 or 100 times stronger to dominate your opponent. Whereas some people like, us have our own theory as to say perhaps it needs to be a little bit less so mj let's you know throw it over to you first since you are the guest guests go first and i have to ask you how strong do you really think that uh characters need to be in dragon ball in this franchise to really overpower their opponents and you know to get the better of them to beat them in a fight so on and so forth uh, about two times now i know people may think that's low but we have examples that we're gonna throw out here in just a second but yeah i get what you mean a lot of people have this idea that you need to be hundreds and hundreds of times stronger than somebody which sometimes may be the case sometimes sometimes but most of the time especially in z and dragon ball it seems like just two times is the sweet spot super and gt i don't know about that <laughs> i'm just kidding um it, it, it seems to be the same still just but, uh, mo yeah, two times is a good spot for me. Yeah, no, two times is, like, the amount that I would say is really good when it comes to dominating your opponent. So, like, for example, if we're going to talk about a two times difference, let's look at Gohan versus Perfect Cell from the Cell games. Now, for example... Uh, Gohan, when he transformed into his Super Saiyan 2 form, you and I pretty much have discussed this off the air and in other videos in the past, and I guess we'll probably do a whole dedicated video at some point just so people will have a better idea about this, but... We think that when Gohan transformed into his Super Saiyan 2, he didn't simply get the two times multiplier that the super exciting guides have stated in the past, but rather he additionally got his hidden power unlocked, which was like part of the whole point. Some people equate the hidden power to Super Saiyan 2. But based upon his performance against Cell, I think it's more reasonable to say Gohan got about four times stronger. And the reason I say four times is because when Cell powered up as, you know, to his 100% full power, and this was after he fought Goku, and then after he fought Gohan, um... When he powered up, he was significantly more powerful than before, and Goku was flat out shocked at how powerful this guy became. So I think it's reasonable, and myself and Dragon Ball Nation have kind of said this in the past as well, that Cell was using about 40 to 50% of his power against Goku and Gohan, and 100% was about two times stronger, you know, than what he had used prior. And then Gohan is still flat up annihilating him with, you know, with little effort, you know, yeah. at a uh, full power. So I think two to th or three to four times is a much better guess to say than, you know, uh, two times just as the multiplier would be. Yeah, I agree with that. Also to add on uh, to the whole potential thing is that when uh, Gohan is fighting the Cell Juniors, Piccolo remarks to Goku that, so this is what you mean when his full power has been drawn out. He's the mightiest of warriors or something like that. He remarks something similar to that. So that kind of just shows to tell you that not only did he get the additional transformation, but everything Gohan had, which is pulled out of him at that moment, you know, all everything was unlocked. And look at the difference between the Cell Juniors and Gohan as well. Now, if someone really needs to be like many, many times more powerful to kind of dominate your opponent in terms of just like beating them and getting the better of them. Well, when Gohan was fighting those Cell Juniors, we saw the Cell Juniors were pretty much on the same par of Vegeta and Trunks. 
and Vegeta and Trunks seem to be maybe a little bit stronger than half as strong as Goku because Vegeta and Trunks, you have to remember, all they sensed of Goku's power was when he powered up against Korin, or like when he was showing Korin his power so he can gauge his power versus Cell. Yeah. So that means that Goku only showed about 50%. And so Vegeta and Trunks are probably like, this 50% is even stronger than we are. This must be Kakarot's full power. Let's go into the chamber and get that much stronger so we can get more powerful than him. And then Vegeta believed he was more powerful than Goku at the Cell games when he was first fighting Cell before he powered up. And he's like, oh, if you think that speed is something, wait until you see mine, you know? So that to me implies that Vegeta might have been like, say, 60% of Goku or something. Mm, yeah. So when you do that that you know gohan was annihilating the cell juniors with a single hit and i don't think he, he necessarily was using 100 percent of his power either and so that would mean gohan would be around you know uh, four to eight times stronger i guess than the cell juniors and he poked them and they died you know like yeah. he didn't even try you know, so apply that to, like, another fight, then that's exactly what is shown that would happen with someone who is that much weaker than, you know, their opponent, for example. But, mm. MJ, like, we've discussed this a lot, too, in the past. If you can look at, like, the Frieza saga, like, we see differences in power that don't seem gigantic, but they still make a big difference when it comes to the fight. What are some examples of those you probably want to talk about? Well... Two examples come to mind. One is the Zarbon fight against Vegeta. Uh, Vegeta was, I believe, around what, 21k? Is it 21 uh, or 24k? Vegeta was, I think, around 23. You know, 23K. he basically scaled up to Goku's Kaioken times 3, for example. And him and Zarbon going at it, and he forced Zarbon to have to transform because Zarbon was getting outclassed. You know, he couldn't keep up with them. You know, like Vegeta was yeah. just so ferocious, he needed to transform. Uh, you know, yada, yada yada, he gets beat up. Vegeta gets a Zenkai supposedly, and now he's so uh, he's a little bit stronger than Zarbon to the point to where we talked about it. He did sort of sort of catch Zarbon off guard, but at the same time, he outputted enough power to literally blast a hole through this guy. You know what I mean? And that was a very insignificant difference between them. You know, so yeah. Another example would be the Raccoon fight, Raccoon versus Vegeta. Mm -hmm. Vegeta powered up. Gave Raccoon everything he had, strongest hit, because he was trying to take Raccoon out of the game. He did not want to have all Guinea Force members piling up on him. He wanted to just take him out as fast as he could. And yeah. Raccoon got up, and yeah, while he was scraped and scuffled, he got up, and literally he was not phased at all by the attack. You know, he was just, yeah, you know, hey. <laughs> so I mean, his clothes were a little bit messed up. His hair was a little bit burnt, but that's about it. <clears throat> and the thing is, like, Vegeta, when he got his Zenkai against Zarbon the, the first time, Vegeta had just fought Zarbon's power in his transformed state, and so Vegeta's Zenkai put him over Zarbon. So yeah. Vegeta's Zenkai placed him around 30,000. I know people don't want to use uh, power levels, but during the Frieza saga, up till the end of the Frieza saga, they're still pretty much valid. They are something given to us by Toriyama and Toei, and they fit into the general power scaling of that, you know, of uh, that example. So Vegeta wasn't that much above Zarbon. I mean, he did throw that dirt in his eyes and take him off guard, but he punched through him and he blasted a gigantic hole in him. So again, that's not that big of a difference in power, and Vegeta still beat him. But another great example I would have to say would be Vegeta versus Kui. Now, when Vegeta first gets to Namek and Kui is there, Kui is bragging about how he's the same power level as Vegeta. Like, they're both 18,000. Yeah. And that was Vegeta's power level, you know, when he was on Earth. However, Kui didn't take into account the Zenkai boost that Vegeta had been getting during his fights, you know, when he was off in space and then when he fought against Goku on Earth. So Vegeta was 23,000, so like 5,000, maybe 6,000 if we say 24 above Kui, which would put him about 20 to 25% stronger. Yeah. And he straight up annihilates Kui in their fight. So again, it seems like a lot of the times from what we see, that 20%, 25% difference is really all you need to just be better than your opponent. And I think another great example to bring up in this case would have to be Goku versus Frieza. And I don't mean Goku... Well, I guess we can use them building up to that. So, like, <clears throat> when Goku shows up, 
his power level is three million when he fights against Frieza. Yeah. And Frieza, you know, he, he can power up to like he goes up to fifty percent. Goku uses the Kaioken times ten, and Frieza is still beating him down without too much effort. Um, you know, when Goku's using the Kaioken times ten, Frieza's using like fifty percent. So he's about two times stronger, and he's just like annihilating Goku for the most part. Yeah. And Goku only has like the chance once he powers up to his Kaioken times twenty to where he can hit Frieza and knock him away because they're equal at that point and then he blasts him with the ka- Kamehameha but Frieza cancels it out so you could pretty much be on par with your opponent maybe like a thousand or so difference or whatever it needs to be million you know whatever um mm. But, like, when you're equal, you know, you pretty much can cancel or fight each other and, like, you know, take blast. But Goku, like, being less than two times at certain points weaker than Frieza was still getting, like, annihilated by him in terms of their fight. Like, Frieza was not really trying that difficult. Like, he wasn't trying that hard. But then when he powers up into Super Saiyan, well, Frieza is only, like, 20% weaker than Goku because he has 120, Goku has 150, and Goku just is not, is beating him the entire fight, you know? Like, Frieza gets in one good shot, which is when he rams him into the ground, and as we know in the uh, Dragon Ball Z anime, there's a whole filler episode in which Gohan fights Frieza, all that stuff like that. Yeah. But in the manga, he just jumps right back out of the ground not that long afterwards, and his clothes are a little bit damaged. There was no lava or anything like that in the, uh, that we can tell in the manga so like you know it's it seems pretty clear that that 20 percent difference was enough for goku to just have this guy beaten the whole fight and then freeze his stamina just took him down to the end um yeah so like do you can you think of any other good examples though mj in the namek arc <sighs> in, general, in general i guess because i mean we already kind of breezed through the you know the the namek arc and everything up until this point when you think about it uh, i would probably say uh the boo arc with uh i would probably say fat boo fat boo mods whatever you like to call him against majin vegeta that's another example because yeah majin vegeta was squared up equal with ss2 goku and from the fight with ss3 goku and fat boo majin boo we can kind of assume that they were sort of equal but it seemed like goku did have the advantage just due to the fact that he does stay in the manga i believe that he could have killed fat boo if he wanted to or at least if he actually tried to yeah so fat boo would probably still be around he wouldn't exactly be four times ss2 vegeta but he would be sort of close to it and then we saw what he did to vegeta he mopped the floor with him you know so i mean honestly i feel like uh fat boo wasn't that many times stronger than vegeta i always kind of placed fat boo at being like a couple times stronger maybe a Mm. little bit more than that but a lot of people use the example of goten and trunks being able to hit him yeah i know a lot of people use that Oh, yeah, you can... Well, I mean, Goten Trunks do hit him. They do catch him off guard, but, like, you know, Boo doesn't really seem at that much, at that many points to really be trying to not take damage because he has such hacks regeneration. It doesn't even matter if he takes damage. But yeah. <laughs> the fact that Vegeta can still hurt this guy, like, many times, and then Boo only really gets to, die, like, gets to, like, have a big advantage once he gets pissed off later in the fight and he takes out Vegeta's arm and they start using those other techniques... Mm. I feel like Boo is maybe around like a little bit more than twice as much because Goku as a Super Saiyan 3 is four times stronger than Vegeta as a Super Saiyan 3, more or less. So, or Super Saiyan 2, actually. So that means, you know, he's four times as strong. Well, if he's dominating Boo 2, but Boo is losing to Vegeta, you could place those in that area. Mm. I mean, Boo wasn't taking a huge amount of damage, but at the same time, I don't know if Goku was really going all out as a Super Saiyan 3, because as he did say... I could have beaten him as a Super Saiyan 3. So it, it does make sense that maybe he's three to or two to three times stronger than Vegeta, and that's still, again, a margin of error that allows for Goku to beat him, even if it's only, like, 25% difference. Again, there is that example. Yeah. Another example, though, MJ, that you can elaborate on would be Gotenks versus Super Boo and then Gohan versus, like, the, the two of them. So would you like to talk about that? Yeah, you're referring to SS3 Gotenks against Super Boo. Now, there's actually a pretty big misconception on this, right? I believe it's because of the dub. I I don't remember if the sub has it, but the dub adds the line that he was waiting for Gohan, right? And that Gotenks mm-hmm. was just a play thing for him. When... 
<laughs> if you read the manga and watch the subversion, you would know that that's not really actually the case. Well, he was waiting for, like, I feel like he might have been able to sense Gohan far away. Uh-huh. But the thing is, like, Gohan still pretty much shows that Gotenks is stronger than Boo because, well, you can you can talk about it a little bit, but I'll just say real quick that Gohan lets Gotenks fight Boo after Gohan fought him, so he must believe that he's stronger, you know, and he could actually beat him. Yeah, that's a great example because, like, uh, to stick to the actual fight though, like when you actually go and analyze that fight and manga, whatever we would read uh, or watch, read, but. Super Boo, he is like landing hits on Gotenks, and they don't really seem to be. I mean, they're damaging him, but they're not really phasing him. If you get that, you know, like they're not really like really hurting Gotenks to the point to where like he's gonna need help or he's getting seriously injured. But at the same time, like there is a there is a gap there where Boo can like sort of keep up with Gotenks and see his movements. But at the same time, though, when Piccolo got angry and Gotenks were wanting to finish it. He sort of did mop Boo. Like, Boo was really about to get murdered <laughs> by Gotenks when he started to use his full power. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you remember that scene? That scene with him just, like, all standing all messed up with smoke coming off of him. You know, like, it's he was really about to, like, just blow him away with whatever move he was charging up. And yeah. that would tell you, again, there's not that big of a difference there. I mean, what? Like, by what? 20% difference? 25%? Yeah, in my video where I talked about how strong Gohan is, I, or Gotenks, I said that I think that Boo was maybe around 20% weaker than than Super Gotenks. And again, a lot of people think he was stronger, but Gohan comes in and he straight up annihilates. Like, he's just wrecking Boo. Yeah. And after he's done wrecking him and Boo comes back, Gotenks fuses together. And then Gohan sees how powerful they as his, are, are as a Super Saiyan 3. And he's like, okay, you guys can fight. Just be careful. So there Gohan go. just saw Super Boo at his full power. All right. He was fighting. Fighting him, Boo was trying as hard as he could, but he could not match Gohan no matter what he did, because Gohan was too much stronger than he was. And then Gohan says Gotenks can fight him, so obviously that means that Gohan believes that Gotenks is stronger than Super Boo, and we haven't seen anything that contradicts that, so it makes sense to say he was, but... He was able to basically endure it because I think a lot of it's also because Go Tanks kind of messed up during their fight, and he told Boo how long it takes for him to have to fuse back yeah. together and how long the fusion lasts, which Boo then uses to like wait until the, they can fuse again, absorb him, and last as long as he can in that fused form. Um, so, like Gohan, though, we'll have to say in terms of his power. Now, I don't think Gohan was tens of times or anything stronger than Boo. I think it's safe to say that Gohan was about maybe at the most twice. And I think it's less than twice, and I'll say why. Because Boo's absorption is portrayed as being, you know, addition. All right, so... He even says, once I add their power to my own, once I add Piccolo's mind and add the power of Gotenks, I'll be unstoppable. Now, Gohan is stronger than Gohan, or he's stronger than Gotenks and Super Boo individually, okay? But once they fuse together, they start to dominate Gohan. They Like the Super Boo Tanks, as you can refer to him as, mm. starts to dominate Gohan, all right? And that would mean that Gohan is individually stronger than both of them by a good margin, especially because he's dominating Super Boo. But at the same time, he is himself not as strong as both of them added together. So that would mean that he's less than twice as strong as Super Boo. And I like talked about this a little bit in my How Strong is Gotenks video. I think it's safe to say that he might be like 1.5 to maybe like 1.7 times stronger than Super Boo was, you know, and maybe like 1.5 times Gotenks. But you add those two together and they're stronger than Gohan. They could beat him in a fight. And so once again, we could see that the difference in their power is not that big however in terms of dragon ball logic in terms of the internal logic of the show a uh, two times difference is substantial and gigantic because like we talked about recently too um the dragon ball super example like how much stronger did you know black get when he turned into his you know super saiyan rose or anything like that well, let's look at it this way. If Black gets two times stronger in his transformation, now, two times doesn't seem like a lot to us because we're so used to such big numbers, but two times is way stronger than Super Saiyan God, all right? So, like, 
two times would mean that they could blow that black could theoretically destroy two times as many you know universes or whatever that goku can like super saiyan blue might be 10 times stronger than the super saiyan god transformation and at this point if they're like three times stronger than they were like you know at that point in their base after battle of gods or right, after the train with Whis. And that would mean 30, that'd be, they'd be 30 times. So that would mean that they could theoretically destroy like 15 to 30 universes with their punches, you know. And uh, Black would be twice as strong, arguably, as that. Or twice, or 1.5 times. So he could theoretically destroy 1.5 times as much. It, so again, it sounds small to us, but it's gigantic. Because back in the day, like... 3,000 power level was a big difference over someone, and now, like, if you add 1.5 times, that's, like, adding trillions of power levels on top of it, and a trillion power level can blow up the universe or whatever it needs to be. So, again, it's it's a huge difference. Yeah. MJ, can you think of any other, like, good examples before, I guess, we, we dis- end our discussion or, you know, uh, figure out, like, what, you know, like, just give a good final conclusion as to how strong we really think they need to be? I'm trying to come up with one for GT and Super, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh, well, we're, we're gonna be here all day because apparently in gt characters and their base forms are stronger than B- super boo despite the fact that they shouldn't have even trained the entire time go or go 10 um <laughs> and then go on can go super saiyan on top of mystic i guess i don't i don't freaking know at that point uh i guess trunks versus goku and super episode 49 I guess, because in the anime, it's different than what it is in the manga, but it seemed like Trunks was able to sort of push back SS2 Goku. Like, it seemed like yeah. Goku was doing all right, but he was getting pushed back, so I'll give him give Trunks that. Goku goes Well, then SS- Trunks actually was stronger than that that he showed, because he said, oh, I'll use full power once Goku turns into a Super Saiyan 3. Mm, that's a good point. So Goku then goes SS3, and then he one-shots Trunks. So, yeah, again, so, you much. know. But, I mean, like, in, in the manga, Trunks is equal as a Super Saiyan 2 once he, like, powers up a little bit more to Goku Super Saiyan 3, so he has to use the God form, the God transformation to beat him. But we have no idea, like, comparing the manga to the anime, like, how equivalent these forms would be anyway. Like, yeah, that's harsh. <laughs> in, the, in the anime, it seems clear that the Super Saiyan forms are stronger than Super Saiyan God. But in the manga, it seems like Super Saiyan God is still a form above them. Who knows? But, uh, mm. all right. So, essentially, you know, thinking about this in our discussion... We have to decide, you know, how strong do you think a character needs to really be to defeat their opponent in Dragon Ball? Um, For me, I feel like 20% and up is, like, a great indicator. You know, you could still kind of, like, edge somebody out with 10%, but they're still going to fight back a good amount. And 20% is still, like, like they're still going to fight back a little bit, but... uh, 20% 20% to two times, you pretty much have somebody beat. And I know a lot of people will say, okay, well, in Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball in general, well, you might not need to be stronger than your opponent. Like, you could still beat them even if you're weaker, but almost every fight we see in this franchise comes down entirely to strength. Like, off the top of my head, Goku versus Pycon, you know, is like, Goku beats him because he has instant transmission, figures out a weakness, but... You know, most of the fights come down just entirely strength or now in super stamina. Um, yeah. yeah. So, like, yeah, I, I feel like it doesn't... It's not really important to, to discuss that. It's more like how strong do you need to be to beat and dominate someone? And I feel like 20 times to two... Or 20% to two times is better. Yeah, that's... that's yeah, I agree with that. The only thing I would have to say is for people who are wondering how strong do you have to be, like, to sort of just keep up with your opponent... I think Nappa and Goku is a good example, right? Because Goku was over 8,000, and people assume that Nappa's full power is a bit over 6,000, you know? And I think yeah. Goku remarks that if he had taken Nappa's full power attack straight on, that he would have been in some trouble, you know? Yeah, and it would have taken him all day, I guess, to beat Nappa, is what he was saying, yeah. too. So um, so that's like a 1.5 times difference if Nappa is about 6,000 and Goku is about 8,000 so he could still kind of compete with them like a little bit like 1.5 times is still but Goku still is gonna be without classing them you know he was like on standing on his head for God's sakes (laughs) yeah so so Goku still was like a good amount above Nappa um but he eventually had to use the Kaioken to outspeed and defeat Nappa before he got to Gohan and Krillin and everyone Mm. um yeah 
So I feel like that's a pretty good, like, again, a pretty good range. We always see this, like, two per, 20%, 1.5, two times in this series. I think that's a pretty good one to go on. You don't need to be 50 times. You don't need to be 100 times or billion or trillion or billion times stronger. You can just be 20%. You can kick the crap out of your opponent. So, uh... You know, let us know your own thoughts down below if you enjoyed this discussion, if you'd like to hear us talk a little bit more and more discussions about, you know, our general thoughts on this stuff. You know, there's so many ideas and so many topics and so many discussions that we could really discuss about power levels and, you know, power scaling, at least. You know, we usually don't go on power levels because they don't really, they're not really factored in anymore. Maybe there's algorithms to figure them out. Maybe we'll discuss that at some other point in the future. But let us know your own thoughts down below. And make sure to go over to MJ's channel and also to check out his content. And I'm sure if you like this video, you're going to like everything that happens over on his channel as well. So make sure to give him a subscribe and don't forget to check out my twitter account so that you can see all of my updates as they come along as well as to subscribe to my channel and to hit those notifications because if you like this video you're going to want to see all my other videos as they come out when they come out so make sure to subscribe to mj and myself and to hit those notifications on both of our channels because i feel like you're going to have a lot of fun if you do so don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and as i always say stick around because there is a lot more to come in the future <laughs>the multiplier for the Super Saiyan Rose pink transformation is weaker than even 1% of my biceps when I'm dead, which is never... Uh.